Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So just last week I got back from an eight day vacation with my family. Uh, we went to Daytona Beach, Florida here in the US. So it was my wife, two daughters, and my, my mommy had to come along. And like most parents, I have my smartphone, a Galaxy S8 Plus, that I took a million different video clips, uh, mainly of my kids. Nobody wants to see that, except for you know their parents being me and my wife. And I wanted a quick way to take all of those clips and just create a real quick video out of them. Uh, something that still looks nice though and has nice transitions and stuff like that. So ordinarily, you know, like the first thought behind my mind is like, okay, I'm gonna have to import all of these into Adobe Premiere and just, you know, put them up and uh, it'll take some time. And I don't need all of the options and all of the millions of features that, you know, like Adobe Premiere offers or Adobe After Effects. So I decided maybe I should look for other alternative software video editors that might be more up this type of use case, this type of alley, where you can just use something, you know, you just throw your clips in and it'll create a nice sort of uh, presentation of whatever the clips are. So I found this one called Mavavi Video Editor 14. I never heard of it before. I never heard of the company. And I they purport themselves as being uh, this editor as being so easy your grandmother can do it. So I thought that was interesting for a few reasons. First, I you know in this channel I'm huge into UI and user experience, and so I wanted to you know take this as, as a chance or a learning opportunity to see how others uh, or how this company is approaching their UI UX for this specific challenging task, and also to see if it actually does solve my problem. All right, so I. Basically, it's going to this this tutorial is going to feature me using this app along with a bunch of clips from the vacation, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so to get started, uh, if you're interested, it's movavi.com forward slash video editor plus. You can download it for free and give it a try. So after installing, this is the screen that you're going to be presented with, and they have. Um, kind of just this dialogue from which you can either choose two options of create a project in full feature mode, which is everything back here and where you're starting from scratch or a montage in easy mode. And I think this is where this app shines the most in terms of simplicity in what it's offering. So I'm going to choose that and we'll see that this window right here shows up and we can see that there's a sequence. So in terms of the UI, it's pretty easy to understand. There's also a next button. So the first thing you do, you add your files, your media files, like your uh, your videos, uh, and then you could choose music and they have some default options here. And we can go on, we'll just go down, on down the line. Um, so this is just some uh, files. These are uh, video files that I, I named. I, I took them straight from my phone. Um, and I renamed them based on the content just to make it easier. So I'm just uh, not really going to choose anyone specifically. Um, I'm just going to choose a few of these um, just at random. <laughs> so I'm just holding control and selecting each of those. And then uh, I could just drag them here. All right. So then you can position these you know, based on whichever you want, one you want to start first. Um, so maybe we'll have this one here. Very, very simple. There's not much else that you can do, um, which is the whole purpose of the, the user experience for those who aren't tech savvy um, for using this montage wizard. So what next? And then we see we have an option um, for different music here to play. So it's, it's categorized here, and this is all music that you can use. So travel, um, you know, we can click discovery. And it'll give you a preview um, of what that sounds like. And once you're you're happy with it, you can just hit plus. Then we can go to transitions, and we'll see. Um, you can just have an automatic crossfade that will show up between your files, or random transitions, simple transitions, etc. So I'll just do a crossfade. Hit next, and then you can have a preview. All right. Pretty cool. We can see the automatic transitions here that are taking Don't place. Very, very simple. And what's really cool over here is this, uh, we have some options right here. So, for instance, um, uh, video duration. The wizard will cut your videos and adjust them to fit the duration of the music track or to the specified length. So, 
um, you can drag this bar or fit it to the music length. Now, if you have not enough clips to match the music length, then it's going to extend or slow down the clips to adjust for that, which is pretty handy. It's really awesome. So then fill black bars. Um, so if you have certain video that's in a, a, like a different crop ratio or portrait mode, it'll it'll fill it'll make it so that it fits to the frame. And then volume balance. This is really cool. Uh, you can use the slider to mix the built-in audio and background music channels. So if you want to hear more of the audio that's present in the clips versus the music that you chose here, then you would slide this either way. So if you want to hear more music, it'll take it a little bit of time here just to, to play, and then you can hear a preview of that uh, in terms of how that works. So really cool stuff, uh, very automated, which is, you know, they purport themselves as being a, a tool that, you know, even a grandmother can use. And I have to say, uh, if your grandmother can use Windows at least, or an operating system in a very basic sense, then they can definitely do that. So then you can just save the video. Um, you have all these different formats here that we can use, H.264. Um, that's what I use for all my videos I upload. Uh, but there's also others, GIF. Um, we can see you can do audio only, um, you can export it specific to mobile devices and all of that good stuff. So I'm just going to leave it at this and then for file name, I'll just put, um, let's see, test YouTube vid and then I'll just say hi and it gives you a file estimation with a duration and start. All right, so I paused while that went. It only took about 40 seconds. So the file test YouTube vid is uh, saved here. So we're gonna open the output folder. And so now I, if I double click uh, the video that was just saved, we can see it show up off screen here. And I'll just have this in my um, player. I'll put fast forward here a little bit, but you can see uh, it'll automatically cut the same split uh, the clip up into different sections. So it's really handy, very automated. And what's cool is after you use that montage, it will automatically just take the project that it, it created and put you into the full featured mode with the clips and everything that it generated so that if there are areas you want to modify and you know how to, then you can do so. Um, so we're not going to actually modify this project. We're going to start from scratch um, by choosing the full feature mode from the very beginning. So what I'll do is go to File, New Project, and we don't want to save this. And then we'll start here in full feature mode. So this simply just takes us right to this main screen. All right. So now, uh, if you're you're someone who wants to to be able to create a little bit more um, uniqueness and editing to, to your, your, um, your project, then you would do it here in this full feature mode version. So it's still very simple, especially when compared to some of the companion apps, uh, the, 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 the large competitors uh, with millions of features. So I'm going to start by uh, just dragging on this show logo too that I did in the sand. All right. And I don't want any audio. So the way you do this, you can see that at the top, we have our audio, our, our video clip and also the associated audio with it. Um, and we can just squash that by left clicking and dragging down and there will be no audio. Now we can add music as well. Uh, if we go to this section right here, it says music. And there's a bunch of different music that you can choose. So the one that I'm going to choose is based on, let's see here. We'll use Twilight Rain coming down here. And you could just double click these to listen, in, to listen to them. All right. So I'm going to just left click and drag it and voila, there we go. All right, so now uh, if you play this, it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, then it'll start, it's just a few seconds generally. All right, so let's add a second clip here right after this one. So I'm gonna look for one called Nat, Claire, and close up, there we go. Drag that there. All right, and let's say we don't want this full frame. Well, simply drag it to where we want it. And maybe right around there. It's my two kids there. 
And let's also add a custom transition, which is doable right here under this transitions tab. And they have a bunch of different transitions from which you can search for or choose the type. I just want uh, fade to black. So I type in black and here we go. It's a very standard type of transition. All right, so now I hit play. And let it load just a second, there it goes. Transition. <laughs> All right. So then I, that's simply the, the very basic beginning portion of, of how you would begin to start your movie. You would just simply add your, your clips um, and then your transitions. And then after that, you would get into more details because you can see when you select one of these clips, you can see all these, um, these icons that sort of highlight in the middle here. Um, so before we get to those, I'm gonna add more clips and I'll just speed up this part right here. All right, so I just got done uh, adding all these clips here. It's only about, I don't know, uh, 50 seconds long, 56 seconds long. Um, and now we could just take this end of this music right here. And by the way, to pan up, we can just use the control key and the mouse scroll wheel. And we can take this and make it match up with the very end, it'll auto snap. All right, so really I didn't do anything unique. I just repeated the same process all throughout. Um, so it's probably worth taking some of these and squashing them down. Uh, and so now let's say for instance, uh, we take a look and we just select one of these clips. Let's take a look at some of the options that we have here. Um, so if I go ahead and click on, for instance, this uh, split, this will split a track right in half or based on where you're currently selected so then you can move it wherever you want so we have two separate clips there I uh, selecting back here we can rotate if we want we which I don't want to so we'll go back there and undo that and then we can crop out certain areas if we only want to focus on a certain section and then we have uh, the color adjustments right here so what's cool is there's auto saturation, auto contrast, magic enhance, and auto white balance that you can check off and it'll automatically provide you with a preview based on these automatic adjustments. However, if you wanna make manual adjustments, um, for instance, one area I think I wanna make it a manual adjustment maybe would be right here. Uh, we can see that we now have access to the brightness, contrast, saturation, highlights, gamma, shadows, hue, set temperature, and tint. And all you have to do is use these uh, sliders and in, a, in the, like a moment, it will load and show you the preview. So if I wanna take the saturation all the way down just to create a different look for this particular clip, we can see that it uh, renders just um, a little bit and now the saturation has been pulled down. So if I hit play. <laughs> So the saturation has been taken down. Um, and then you can just experiment with these based on your needs. Um, let's say for instance, uh, for snail, this is kind of like I would be, this would be cool if this was sped up, all right? So, so if we double click this, we can see we get access to the speed of this particular clip. So let's speed up to like, I don't know, 500. You see the, uh, the more you speed it up, it'll automatically scale it down. And so now that uh, snail or whatever it is is gonna go quicker into the sand. All right, uh, all right, so cool. Um, and then of course, looking at some of the other options, we have transition wizard. Um, so this is a, uh, a panel, this model is, module that shows up, use this transition style for all clips. And that's just a quick way of replicating the um, process that I did here manually. And then also you can record audio by clicking this if you choose. Now, of course, each um, clip has its own audio properties where you can take down the audio, audio all the way if you want, um, fade in and out. There's also an equalizer, noise removal, 
audio effects and beat detection. And you can do some cool stuff. If you click on each one of those, it'll provide you with a dis uh, description here. Now, what's also cool, I, under this menu here, we also have callouts that you can add. So for instance, if you wanted to highlight a certain area, um, you can click on one of these and you can position it here or not position it, but um, let's, let's just, uh, this gives you a quick preview of it and then you can double click it or drag it to apply it based on where you want it to go. I'm gonna back up, control Z. Uh, we also have stickers, so click this and stickers, you can apply stickers. Um, on top of the videos that you want to apply and there's a bunch here that you can choose from very simple um, we can also apply animation we can pan and zoom there's stabilization for shaky videos uh, and that's something that you'd see um, you know in, in Adobe uh, After Effects and, and Premiere as well so they have this which is very handy um, and then you can highlight and conceal certain areas like blur out or highlight where um, if I just, uh, let's see here, click on this, we could see that it turns it to bitmap in a sense if it's in conceal mode or highlight here otherwise. You can also feather it as well and change the size. So very flexible in terms of that, very extremely easy to use. All right, so I'm just gonna back down off of both of those. And then also there's a chroma key section. So if you're working with green screen, which in my particular footage I'm not, you can take out the background and replace it with anything else. So very, very handy. So at the end, if you're ready to export this, then simply we can choose uh, under this type of format right here at the bottom, we could choose export and we'll choose, I'll just leave it at um, final project here and start. All right, so it's been uh, saved here. I'm gonna open the output folder. So if I double click here, we can hear the sad sort of music if I get this in here. Um, see our desaturated video in here. Um, I forgot to decrease the audio on this one. She's asking me what. I think my wife has a fanny pack coming up here. Oh, there it is. You can add a call out actually just to, to highlight that. All right, and that is it. So my thoughts on this app, this Movavi Editor, Video Editor 14, are that I was most impressed with the very beginning portion where I used the montage editor, which is a very simplified version of the, the program. Simply, you, you just take all your clips, you drag them or you import them, and then the timeline is essentially just your thumbnails where you're reordering them by left clicking and dragging. So that's the timeline and there's no other options. So in terms of simplicity, it's 100% right there where it needs to be. If we're talking about your target audience being grandmothers and people who aren't very technically proficient, uh, and then you add your music with a very you know, simple, it had pretty a decent amount of uh, a user library or, or a library for music. And then you choose your transitions. Uh, you can even choose random transitions. And then finally, there's a few other options like adjusting the clip audio versus the music level audio and then exporting it. And there you go, you have your video. So as with the full experience, like the full actual editor, I wasn't as impressed with that because I come from a background where I'm using really robust software. So I'm already used to that. So I think really the strength and where they could really focus on even more is really just pushing the fact that it is extremely simple to use, uh, especially if you use that very simple editor. So hopefully we use that as a learning, exp learning experience if we're product developers, for instance, and I know a lot of you are, that you don't always have to, if you're building a product or a service, you don't always have to take the route of offering every feature and then some over your competition. You can scale it down drastically and target a different audience. So hopefully you found that useful. If you like this uh, this video, make sure you subscribe here. Check out my site, Corsetra.com. And of course, if you wanna check out Movavi, that is at Movavi.com. All right, see you guys later.